Good morning, guys. How are we all doing? I am Dan from Trading with Dan. This is our Bitcoin morning update. So, if you guys wouldn't mind smashing that like button, we shall go straight over to those Bitcoin for our charts. So, on the Fed, uh, the Fed decision yesterday, uh, and the Fed speech afterwards, uh, we got a got a pretty nice rally in Bitcoin and and all other risk assets as well. Not obviously not just Bitcoin. Uh, so, we have found ourselves back in in the vicinity of this uh this quite important resistance area uh this area that we have been through once and then failed to maintain above so we came down we put in a uh we put in a nice higher low uh and can we now on push on through take out this high and get some acceleration towards uh towards the mid well i say the mid uh the mid the mid to higher uh 20 k's that is that is the question we've got going on at the moment um, obviously a lot of this move is off the back of just general uh, risk asset move what we had was there was a certain uh, amount of chance I think I believe it was about 20% chance priced in that we were going to get a 100 basis point uh, uh, rate rise so when obviously it get confirmed at 75 then um, then obviously the market then has to adjust to adjust to the fact that there's then a zero percent chance of the hundred because we had a seventy five. Um, also, it seems like the Fed is now becoming uh, becoming uh, data dependent, which was basically the first step towards pivoting. Uh, it's the first step. I mean, they they had the expression uh, back uh, back when they uh, blew the repo market up of watching paint dry. Uh, that was i.e. they weren't going to do anything they were just going to let it happen and uh, not react to anything and then obviously once uh, the fed becomes data dependent that means they are they're right they're basically aware they're going to have to take uh take note of of incoming uh, economic stats as they come in and act accordingly they can't just assume that inflation is x where it is x uh the balance sheet is is y and they're going to basically uh, just in autopilot do what they're going to do because they realize that the market can't hack that now so yeah it's a first step towards a pivot pretty pretty much staying their data dependent um yeah there was all sorts of other uh garbage from jerome powell just literally just propaganda garbage that clearly wasn't the case and he's practically a bit of He's practically a laughing stock on fintwit i mean the guy is just an idiot uh well it's not an idiot but um he like He's in a difficult position, <laughs> put it that way. Um, but yeah, stocked above above this. They are nicely above their important resistance level. Uh, deep, well, not deep, but um, into the into the four Ks, uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, maintaining above there at present. So uh, yeah, there was a uh, there was a uh, an unwinding of uh, of uh, basically puts. Uh, just short side protection and that uh, that drove drove that's initially what's driven these markets higher is unwinding of a downside protection because um, because if there is uh, I mean the the risk of uh, of as many or as 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 big uh, Fed rate hikes now is basically off the table and um, I think the futures markets are literally predicting just slightly over uh one percent for the rest of this year and then that will be it and that is what it's pricing at the moment i fully expect that to come down maybe they get a 50 base po basis point uh one next time i guess it will depend on how inflation comes in but um definitely seems like it's stalling out definitely seems like we could have had a high print but we will find that out find out that soon also gd gdp prints are not going to be looking uh, that particularly good but they are obviously backwards looking indicators the only problem we've really got is the labor market but the labor market stats kind of largely uh, ignore uh, the uh, the labor force participation rate so uh, it is tight on the face of it which means uh, the fed uh, can still uh, be aggressive but i mean that's one thing the other thing is that uh, credit markets uh, will collapse bond markets will uh, struggle uh, and yeah uh, asset markets will basically um, if they actually did try to taper a Ponzi in the in the words of Max Kaiser uh, then yeah they will just that would be the end be the end of the Ponzi basically uh, but yes that all being said let's look at some other markets DXY uh, nicely weak here uh, yeah we kind of want to see this come like want to see this come down we'll probably draw on a horizontal here as well it's probably an important -ish level to take out as well uh, but yeah these recent lows here we're practically at i mean we could draw a horizontal in here too uh, these recent lows uh, obviously below these trend lines that we've had in 
uh so uh yeah we could see a nice move this is potentially breaking down how far down it comes who knows uh i mean even just as far as uh this just under 104 uh, a perfectly reasonable target for a potential bounce but then it could start to look like a head and shoulders a similar to what we have in the yield uh in the 10 year uh a pretty much uh what looks like a head and shoulders if this is to break down i mean we spoke about this before if this breaks down the dips why it breaks down if stocks break up uh then we are going to have uh one of those uh one of, uh, we are going to have a great a great rally and whether that turns out to be one of these uh super massively aggressive sucking everybody in um bear market rallies we'll have to see or whether it literally we just we just go into the whole crack up boom ludic von mises crack up boom and just continue up up and away in in a in a in a yeah in a i don't know in a uh in a zimbabwe type fashion uh gold is kind of reacting to this as well as you would expect it to react um obviously they are not necessarily going to be uh tackling inflation and well, i mean they're not literally uh dependent on the inflation numbers i mean a lot of the market i see a lot of market professionals they literally this is their reasoning their reasoning is that inflation affects everybody a recession only a certain amount of people lose their jobs and in fact affects them and everyone else is okay um that is their reasoning i'm not i'm not too sure that that is the greatest reasoning i'm not too sure things are that simple anyway especially not in these highly financialized markets uh if we get basically a a a finance system currencies that are starting to go haywire bond markets that are starting to go mad then um i don't think uh, it's just as simple as a uh, uh, inflation affects everybody and uh, and it will only be about two two percent of people that will lose their jobs in the recession i, I literally don't think it's that simple because then the reasoning is that they will uh, just uh, keep tightening cause a recession because they've got to kill the inflation but um there's too much there's too much debt in the system the only way the debt's going is through inflation so inflation is what they want they just uh, need people uh to uh um not uh not revolt because of it uh oil um just hanging around hanging around these lows uh i mean if we do if we do uh um well it's kind of a difficult one if we do see some bad numbers that will be uh bearish for oil however it will be good uh for liquidity however i would uh suggest that oil is not necessarily just driven on on a on a on liquidity like other financial assets are and particularly risk assets so uh yeah i mean whichever way you look at it uh it is it is relatively likely that this will uh, that this uh, is going to break down lower i can't see it just continuing up up and away uh because just yeah just the ec economic conditions in 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 the real economy are just not uh are not conducive to that um Let's look at Ethereum. Ethereum are looking particularly good here, uh, taking out the recent highs of the of these moves up, which is good to see. Um, still away 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 from this this important resistance area. The Satoshi pairing though also um, towards these highs at this resistance. I mean, if it breaks through here, um, it has this level, and once it starts to get a north spot north eight handle, uh, it starts to look. Uh, it starts to look uh, particularly good uh, for a uh, for a move uh, for potentially a move out of this range and then onwards and upwards and at which point uh, Ethereum will go absolutely mad. I mean Ethereum may be with the merge with how useful Ethereum is, how uh, well DeFi has has worked during all this uh, liquidity problem. Um, I mean Ethereum may be what drags drags crypto out of this bear market, kicking and screaming out of the bear market purely by it's uh it's uh it's just it's utility uh and it's and it's well basically it's use because it is a uh it is not like bitcoin where nothing really happens no one particularly uses it it's just uh, an inverted comma store value however it isn't really um the amount of transactions and fees generated by bitcoin is in in, in the scope of other uh other cryptos and other applications in crypto is basically uh pathetic um, but this is a uh, is a non pathetic asset that could drag, uh, which is basically um, the crux of all of crypto in reality, um, barring a few of uh, uh, just scammy L ones that will basically most likely fail, and then obviously Bitcoin, which has just uh, just got first leader advantage. I mean, it's the Yahoo, isn't it? It's the Yahoo of crypto. 
uh, and then obviously we've got the Google here of crypto. But yeah, uh, it, we are in the early days though. Uh, whilst uh, whilst uh, allegedly Yahoo is uh, is is the, is the way is the future. Uh, but anyway, anyway, enough enough of that. Um, yeah, not too much else we needed to look at on here. I guess stocks have got to stay above this resistance, this support area. Um, if we do break back below, then yeah, we could see moves low, and we could basically come back to these lows, and then ultimately we could it could start to uh, uh, go to go go down the pan again. Uh, let's look at stochastics. Uh, we do know we're getting some mid-term ones not looking good, but the higher time frame ones were looking good. Uh, so yeah, four hour is getting a bit elevated here. Eight hour, eight hour's got a lot of room to run. I mean, these ten, ten and twelve have now turned up. So these what were dragging us down, uh, are now going to give us potential upside momentum. It is looking like the daily could turn back up as well. Uh, and then two day looking good. Three, two day was actually starting to turn back down, uh, but now uh, on the way back up again. So two day, I mean three day, five day. These, I mean, it's looking, it is looking so good for a pretty uh, decent move. Uh, move to the upside uh where that uh where that move um where that move takes us uh, uh sorry whether that move then takes us to new all-time highs in a new bull market or whether it is just a pretty aggressive uh uh bear market rally uh nonetheless it could very easily get us into this range here uh which is uh well it, that range is significantly higher than 40,000 so we could we could we could at best case in a bear market rally here based on these uh, on these numbers uh, get a 2x from where we are on bitcoin and, and hit the mid 40s i mean 30s uh, i i think are practically a given this will be the first area where uh, we can we get rejected from a given as we get up to the up to there and get rejected but i mean if things if the party just starts to get going uh, then yeah yeah, we are. We will. We can be looking at here, and then yeah, we can certainly turn down from here, come down and take out these lows, uh, go um, go to go to Goblin Town. But then if we take this out, if we take these areas out, then um, then yeah, we go and we go and we going up. Number go up again. So that is about it, guys. Remember, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Always do your own research, and I shall speak to you guys soon.